Hello everybody, welcome to Life Science Live. Today we're talking about spiders. We'll give people a quick second to log on. And I did bring a spider friend with me to show you guys. So if I'm looking down a lot, it's because I'm looking at what she's doing down there. Let's see here. But we'll give everybody just a second. But again, for those who are just tuning in for the first time today, this is Life Science Live. Oh. We had a little bit of a connection error for one second. Let's make sure that's working. Okay, we're talking about spiders. Again, if that went through or did not go through. First thing that we're gonna talk about is webs. Webs are made of silk, and I learned this today, but there are seven different types of webs that spiders in the universe make, okay? And so how they're doing that is with their spinnerets, which kind of on the spider look like they're right here kind of right on the back, and they kind of spin underneath the spider's body. But it kind of just looks like, if you're looking at the very back of their body, like there's these two, kind of like, it literally looks like a stick, and sometimes they'll move them like this, and those are those spinnerets. And different spinnerets, with a combination of how a spider's body looks, create different types of webs. There is one spider, which I wrote the name of it up here, the orb weaver spider, that contains the ability to spin five of these seven webs. And that's the most that any one spider can do. There is no spider that can do all seven or even six. The orb weaver can do the most. So this silk exits the body to create these webs using gravity and also legs pulling them out. So for example, one of the webs that the orb weaver can do looks like wool. And it kind of looks like it was woven together in a really intricate way and it's really coarse. But that's not actually what happens. The spinnerets aren't actually braiding the silk as it exits the spinnerets. What's happening is, as the silk is leaving the spinneret, these long legs in the back, which are very hairy, are combing them through and kind of stretching them. They're kind of be like teasing your hair and brushing up your hair. That's basically what the orb weaver spider is doing to create this woolly web that acts like a Velcro. So there are seven, which is so, so cool. Um, our spiders here at the museum are tarantulas, they're Chilean rosehead tarantulas, and their webs are kind of sticky, but not to the extent that they're woolly, because they don't really serve that same purpose. But again, so it depends on their body shape, their legs, and then what spinneret they physically and anatomically have onto their body. The silk, as it sits inside of the spider's body, is actually a liquid, and so it doesn't become sticky or more viscous until it reaches the air. So inside of the body, it is a liquid, and it is just proteins. It's just made of natural proteins that are inside of the spider's body. So it's kind of just this protein juice that is sitting in a spider's body until it is time for it to be used. Now again, not every spider creates webs. Not every spider uses webs. Speaking back to our tarantulas here at the museum, our tarantulas kind of spin webs out of a nervous habit. They also use them as a way to maintain moisture in their homes. Um, tarantulas often live in the desert. Here in Utah, they live in the desert. So if they're spinning a web in their burrow, it might be because they're trying to secure moisture on dry dirt or also just make it more their space. And so they're putting, putting webs in it. In our cages, or not cages, our enclosures for our spiders here at the museum, they each have a log. And normally if you flip over that log, their spider webs under it because that's their burrow that they like to be in. Many jumping spiders, especially our desert jumping spiders, do not spin webs at all. Don't even have spinnerets. They are just going to catch their prey by waiting and watching and jumping. So those are some uses for them. Um, good, let's talk about how we classify spiders for just a second. So in the museum, in our insect section, we have the big diagram that talks about how we classify insects. And so this group that spiders are in is called the arachnids. I, I can write that up here. The arachnids. Which makes sense because these groups are named after Latin roots. And so in Spanish, the word for spider is arania. So arachnids. So these arachnids have two body parts. And these up front kind of look like antenna, but they're not. Two body parts, eight legs, no antenna, and no wings and they do not have the ability to chew, which is kind of interesting. So these up here are not antenna. I'll explain what those are in a second. But they, two body parts, eight legs. So up front, what I've drawn that kind of look like antenna but are not supposed to be, and I'm gonna probably pronounce these wrongs, are chelcarae and pedipalps.
helps. And so what these are doing up here, depending on the spider, the chelcrae are going to be a more of a fang with venom in them. So if they were to bite, maybe it would sting or maybe something else would happen. Um, certain spiders, they can bite insects and kind of liquefy their insides. That wouldn't really happen to us because we're just too big. We have too much mass. Or these pedipalps are used for grabbing and moving things towards the mouth so that they can feed. Both of which, though, are helping them feed. Our tarantulas, the Chilean rose-haired tarantulas, they can bite you. And it's more of a sting. If they were to bite you, it would kind of feel like a wasp. So there is venom there. And so they can have four what can look like four tiny grabbers in the front. And when we bring out our tarantula, you'll kind of be able to see those and kind of classify for yourself. But that is what those are. The arachnids are part of the anthropod um, genus. And so, which is really cool, the anthropods make up 80% of all life on Earth. Which is very, very cool. Good. The biggest spider in the world is kind of up for a debate. You'll have to comment below and let me know which you think is the biggest one. Most people would say that the South American Goliath bird-eating spider, which is also known as the puppy spider, is the biggest spider in the world. They're saying that it is about the size of a child's forearm. It's about 30 centimeters in what they do, um, what's it called? The distance that their legs can spread apart is 30 centimeters. So, they're saying it's about this big or the size of a small puppy. And the pictures are wild. You guys need to look that up. But it is up for debate whether it is larger or the bigger spider between this one and the giant huntsman spider. The giant huntsman spider can actually spread its legs even farther, almost near 36 centimeters. But it is not as heavy, it's not as tough of a spider as the South American Goliath bird-eating spider. So that's kind of up for debate. But that South American um, Goliath bird-eating spider, it has such a long name, can be 170 grams. So that's, that's a thick boy. That is a big spider. So it's very, very cool. Um, lastly, we're gonna go back to webs just for a second before we talk to Tara um, and talk about some different uses for webs. There's one more that I forgot to say, of course, which is our classic use for a web. So we talked about tarantulas using webs as a means to have more moisture in their environment. Um, but uh, the classic one, which every kid should know, is that spiders can create these webs and trap prey in them, right? And so they might get stuck in a sticky web, or as we know, any of the seven webs, it could be rough, they could be, there's just a lot of options there. And they will sense that there's something in that web and come down and wrap it in more silk. That is one way that it can be done. Spiders also use their webs to travel. Sometimes it looks like they're flying, but really they're using their webs to glide or they can lower down their webs. If they're gonna fall, they could attach their web and then lower down and save themselves. So very, very cool. Let's bring out Tara so we can test some of these skills. We're gonna look and see if we can classify her and see how many legs she has. Look at her spinneret and also look at her pedipalps at the front, okay? So, and we'll talk a little bit about her body structure just for a quick second. Give her a second to come out. It's been such a long time since we've had um, live animals on Life Science Live, so I thought today would be a really good day. Give her a second to get acclimated. Okay, so this is Tara, and she's our Chilean rose hair tarantula here at the museum. Let's see if I can turn her around. She's like, oh my goodness, I haven't been held in a moment by you. Um, oh, there she is. Let's see, let me come a little bit closer. There's a, I set up a table so we could have her be close. But, so she's our Chilean rose hair tarantula. Her center body is kind of rosy which is where she gets that color from. You can see that her body is covered in hair. So this might be a spider that when it pulls out that web could be a little bit more rough. And we'll see, maybe she has some webs under her log that I can show you guys. But her body is covered in hair and this is one way that she can hear. She kind of listens for those deep bass sounds and can feel them in her hair um, and be alerted. 
Let's see if we can turn her around. You can see those pedipalps really quick. She wants to crawl all the way up my arm. Good girl. There we go. Okay. So you can look at the very front. You see her kind of feeling with those pedipalps to kind of get a grip as to where my hand is. And then underneath those pedipalps is where those chat de pre are, where she can, and I'll type those words underneath because they're tough, where she could have venom inside. And you can see that she has these two body parts. It's a little hard to see from this angle because I don't want to dip her down and make her feel uncomfortable, but two main body parts and then her four sets of legs as part of that arachnid. Let's see if we can get her to turn around just for a second so you can see that. There we go. Just like that, those two body parts. So if anybody has any questions about spiders in general, or kind of what webs do, that's mostly what we focus on today is webs. Oh no, she's being so, so still. So you can see those two body parts, those pedipalps in the front that she uses to feel around. Um, but anyways, if anybody has any questions or they have a comment that they'd like to drop me, or they have a suggestion for what they'd like to see for a Life Science Live discussion, please drop it below. Oh, I just remember there's one thing that we didn't get to show you guys because she's walking around, but she's really calm right now. Let me show you that spinneret. So on the very, very back, oh, she goes, mom, no. On the very, very back part of her body are those spinnerets. And for you, it's gonna kind of just look like a black spot if you can even see it. But those are those spinnerets where that web is coming from, right at the back. There you go. Anyways, very good. If anybody has any questions, comment them below. Thanks for watching with us.